All right, so we're going to demonstrate the Pediatric Respiratory Compromise Station for the National Registry Advanced Psychomotor Exam. Um, so we have our dispatch. We're basically going to be dispatched for a one-year-old uh, pediatric patient having respiratory distress. Uh, so Greg's going to play our part of the uh, lovely father uh, taking care of his child. Um, so once the uh, scenario starts, um, we're going to come in, uh, scene safety, have our BSI on. We're going to observe from a distance, uh, distance to get the general impression. And so we notice that we have an approximately one-year-old pediatric patient uh, showing signs of respiratory distress. Uh, I'm going to assess the airway. Um, so as we look at the airway, we're looking for any secretions, uh, making sure that the airway is clear, and uh, listening for any of those audible sounds. We're going to go ahead and assess breathing, look for uh, chest rise and fall, uh, to see if we see anything that's out of the ordinary, any chest excursion, um, any, uh, like I said, audible sounds, and then we're going to go ahead and check our perfusion. Um, and so we can assess for a pulse, uh, but really, at this point, we're going to go ahead and, uh, because we have the difficulty breathing, um, we're going to attach a pulse oximeter. And of course, this would be attached to the actual pulse oximeter, uh, but we're going to go ahead and stick this on our pediatrics foot. And at this point, um, once we do that, uh, our examiner is going to uh, inform us that the pulse oximeter shows a saturation of 82%. All right, so because we have that low SpO2, we're going to go ahead and attach some oxygen uh, with our um, non-rebreather. We're going to go ahead and set it at uh, between 8 and 10 uh, liters for our blow-by at this time. And I'm going to go ahead and instruct uh, my patient's uh, father to go ahead and hold it uh, kind of close to the airway um, to get in some oxygen. And then I can go ahead and assess the pulse, uh, look for perfusion, uh, see uh, how the pulse is, look for the skin color, temperature, and condition. Uh, to look for perfusion, I can assess cap refill, uh, as well as try to identify uh, the rest of the vitals, so pulse respiration and, and once again the cap refill. All right, so at this time the evaluator is going to give us a prompt and they're going to tell us The patient begins to develop decreasing SpO2, decreasing pulse rates, seesaw respirations, head bobbing, and drowsiness. All right, so that's now our key. So I'm going to go ahead and take the, uh, take the infant from, from dad and we're going to go ahead and place the infant down on the table. All right. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and measure, uh, consider the uh, insertion of an airway. So we're going to go ahead and measure and then insert using a tongue depressor. Uh, once again, make sure, you, uh, make sure you hook that tongue and then we're going to go ahead and insert our uh, oral airway. And now I want you to go ahead and try to ventilate. The evaluator should tell us um, that we inserted it and they do not have a gag reflex. Okay, so I'm getting a good seal. All right, so I see chest rise. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, because our airway's in, we're going to go ahead and hook up our oxygen and we're going to turn this up to 15 liters per minute and we're going to continue ventilations. Okay, ventilation should continue at one breath every three seconds, uh, three to five seconds. And we're going to do this for one minute, watching for good chest rise. Okay, so while we're observing for chest rise and ventilating, one breath every three seconds, we can go ahead and insert our capnography. So this would be hooked up to our 12 lead uh, or uh, 12 lead life pack, 15 life pack, 12 uh, result device. And then how would you know that you were ventilating the patient properly? All right, so we know that we're ventilating properly by looking at SpO2. So we should have an improvement in SpO2. Uh, we should have an improvement in capnography. We should also see an improvement in skin color, temperature and condition, as well as level of consciousness. All right, so once we've done that, um, our last step is to basically call for immediate transport and then you can tell uh, the examiner that you're done.